Welcome. All right. So I get this, you know, problem a lot uh, when dealing with students is, you know, why are you plotting all those points? You know, it's easy. Just use the formula. Just use the formula. You don't need to plot them up. But the reason why I showed you how to graph them, because then we get to a problem like this where I'm rather than trying to find the midpoint, I'm actually giving you the midpoint and one endpoint. And now we need to identify what is going to be the other endpoint. And so plotting the points just becomes so much help, so helpful. Um, and really being able to understand what exactly we're trying to solve. So I'm going to go back to solve this problem and to explain it, I'm going to again plot the points. So I have my midpoint is at 1, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's my midpoint. And my endpoint is at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, comma 1. All right, so if we we're going to look at this, we can say from here to here. Now, again, to find this endpoint, I can kind of estimate it's going to be somewhere over here, right? We know this endpoint, we know the midpoint, but we need to figure out what this point is. So going with the understanding of what a midpoint is, it's directly in between your two endpoints. The problem is, we just don't know this endpoint. Now, what I can do is say, so this endpoint is going to be some x and y coordinate, which we do not know, right? So the only thing we can say is, um, what we're going to do is we know the midpoint, and, but we do not know what, the x, um, what the, x, the x and the y value is for the endpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my midpoint formula and I'm going to break it up. So I'm going to say x1 plus x2 divided by 2 equals, remember that equals the midpoint, the um, x3. And let's do y1 plus y2 divided by 2 equals y3, right? Now, what was y3? What was, what were the, what was x1 and x, or x3 and y3? x3 and y3 is what happened when we got these values, right? Which are the values of the midpoint. So do we know the values of the midpoint? Yes, we know the x, that x value of the midpoint is 1. So instead of using x3, I'm going to say the midpoint was 1. The y coordinate of the midpoint was 7. Now. Of the endpoints, we know one value of the endpoint, but we don't know the other x, right? We know one x, but we don't know the other x. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our endpoints in one for x and one for y. Now, determine is it should be for x1 or y1, or x1 or x2, y1 or y2. It doesn't really matter. You just need to choose. So let's, let's plug them in for x1 and, and y1. So x1 is going to be my first point in my endpoint, which is negative 3, and y1, which would be 1. Now you can see I have an equation that I can go ahead and solve for x. So to do that, I need to apply my inverse operations. So I need to get the 2 off the bottom. So I'll multiply by 2 on both sides. Um, these 2's divide to 1. And therefore, I'm left with a negative 3 plus x2 equals 2. Now I use my inverse operations again by using the addition property of equality. And I can say that now x2 equals 5. Over here, I need to apply my inverse operation, so I'll use a different color. It's just so it doesn't get confusing. Again, you need to multiply by 2 on both sides. Well, I'll multiply by 2 and divide by 2, divide into 1, and I'm left with 1 plus y2 equals 7 times 2 is 14. Subtract 1. Let's use my lovely color. Subtract 1, subtract 1. y2 equals 13. So therefore, the end point. We already know one endpoint. Now the new endpoint is 5, 13. And let's go and plot that point and see if it makes sense to my graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So over 5, up 13. And yeah, I'm a little off on my thing, but you can see that, yes, that makes sense. All right. So um, when provided a midpoint and an endpoint, break up the midpoint formula, set them equal to their values of your midpoint, and then go ahead and solve for your still missing endpoint. Thanks.